There you go. Are we blessed with a wonderful yes. music Whoa. ministry? Whoa. Whoa. I want to thank the music team for your dedication, oh, for your discipline, for the time that you put in, and for your willingness to embody the songs that you play and that you sing. I'm loving it that we're on the same team. They were signed up in the team of light, and the team of love, and the team of peace, and the team of joy. What we do has no end, has a rippling effect. Every song we sing, every song you play, every note you play, makes a profound difference in the complete makeup of the universe, mm -hmm. you know, of the multiverse, of the omniverse. <laughs> so anytime we lend our talents and our skills to what we call God, which is just the all and the everything, the truth and the light, we are truly blessed. I want you just to always just take time each day to sit and be quiet and allow yourself to feel the coming back to you of everything that you have extended mm -hmm. to forward heaven on planet earth. Thank mm -hmm. you one by one. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. It's good to see you again, brother. I did miss you the last time I was here. It's good to see you. Hug me up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so glad uh, to be here today. It's three Sundays. I remember leaving here last time. The last time I wasn't going to see you for three Sundays, I sneaked in on a Sunday and I got to be a part of the service with another minister here, and that was wonderful. I wasn't able to do that this time, so I was like, oh, shucks. It's just going to be three weeks until you see them. We'll just make it better. It's like having to go to the bathroom and not having to, and not being able to get to one for a while. It's just as better once you get there. So I figured that once I got to see you today, I will be super happy. This for me is my birthday service. I will have another one at Old Church next Sunday. But uh, when's your birthday? The day after tomorrow at 2:22 in the afternoon. I will have to give you. 67 circles of the earth around us. And uh, I am just so, so grateful to be here. And uh, so grateful that each and every one of you are treasures and blessings in my life. I'm particularly glad about the time we've had to share for the last two years, because two years ago is when I flatlined and went into complete cardio, cardiac arrest. And I was just thinking like this week, what were the gifts of me coming back from the other side? Like, looking back over the last two years, like, have, did it make a difference to me that I had the experience of dying and coming back? I want you to know it made a profound difference in me. I always have loved the beauty of the planet. I always have loved people. But it has been turned up a notch. I am blown away by the beauty of this planet. Mm. I am blown away by the goodness. There's so many times we concentrate our focus and our attention on the shadows of life, the things that don't seem to be going right, yes. the people that we think are wrong, or even ourselves mm. that we think are wrong. And we don't allow, when we're focused on the negative, mm. during that time of our focus, we are, of course, unable to focus on the positive. So I have been really able for the last two years not to get caught in the traps that I was getting caught up in previous to having died and come back. Those traps were primarily the traps of judgment. There's always somebody. There's always some featured individual <laughs> that everybody agrees it's okay to judge against. And if there was a big enough group judging against that person or that group of people, then I found it okay to like join in. Mm. Uh, the last two years I have not been able to join in. Amen. I realize the ridiculousness of focusing on the shadow instead of focusing on the light that is dancing in the shadow. Mm. I've preached for years yeah. that the only purpose of the shadow is to serve as a background for us to be able to see the light dancing. In a field of complete light, I was at Hope Church uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I lit candles on the altar. And I, the candles were in back of several uh, framed pieces of art that they had. 
And I got in before anybody came into service, and I lit all these little tea, tea light candles behind those pictures. And the church was filled with brightness. The lights were on in the church. And at some point during the service, I asked someone, do you notice the light coming from the altar? And no one could see the light. I asked for someone to go to the back to the light switch and turn the lights off. They turned the lights off in the church. And suddenly you could see the illumination on the altar of all the little tea lights. And it was just an indication, a reminder, that you can't see the light when the light is dancing in the light. But you can see the light when the light is dancing in the shadow. We always argue against all of the incorrect things that are going on, the inappropriate people that are out there, the inappropriate things that are happening in our world and in politics, the, 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 the people who are disenfranchised, the lack of inequity in the world, the racism, the sexism, all of that can be our focus, but I believe that we have an opportunity to have a different focus, to just see all the awesome things that are going on. I like certain news stations, certain news programs, after they give you the news about the hurricane, <coughs> and the tornadoes, and all of the divisions in politics, they end their broadcast in the last three minutes with a good news story. Yeah. It's a story of someone who is doing something remarkable with their life, the littlest thing. It could be somebody that, that saved the teddy bear of a little girl mm -hmm. from a sewer in Boston. That happened like three years ago. Everybody was up in arms about the cops and the inequity and, and Black Lives Matter. And I was focused on that, but then I saw the story of this policeman who went down into a drainage system in Boston mm -hmm. to, re to retrieve a teddy bear for a little girl who was broken hearted that she had dropped it down the sewer. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I could spend the rest of my day focus on what is wrong and people who are not serving the light or I can spend the rest of my day thinking about that dude mm. who went in that hole mm. and got that teddy bear and gave it to that little girl who burst out in tears because it was the blessing of her life experience. Mm. So it's all about focus and having died and come back I have a new focus. Mm. I have pretty much not been on Facebook at all. I first had the glory of saying, Timothy, is there any way that I can not see people's Facebook messages? Because I had died, I had gone to the light, I had gone to a place of complete oneness. When I came back from that experience, Donald Trump had been elected. And so I got on Facebook to go see my friend's garden, who always posted pictures of her garden, and to see my other friend's little girl who he posted pictures of her every week. And everyone was posting such spewing negativity that I was too sensitive to deal with it. I was too sensitive to take it in. And I thought that if I had not died, I might be a part of it. I might get back to somebody and say, you got that right. But I was shaking, literally shaking, because I don't care what politicians do. Mm. I do care what we do. Mm -hmm. I do care about the groups of spiritual communities that I'm involved in, that we do more than just talk, talk, that we actually become the manifestation of light and love on this planet. We do not need yet another person talking trash about another person. Mm. <laughs> it's just a waste of time. So, in the last two years, I have been far more conscious. I have been far more awake. There are times where something gets ready to come out of my mouth, and before it gets out of my mouth, I get an icky feeling. That's my barometer. If I get an icky feeling about something getting ready to come out of my mouth, don't let it come out of your mouth. One thing my mom was famous for saying with me and my siblings was, if you can't say anything nice about her, then don't say anything at all. Mm -hmm. That's where I've been living in the last two years. If I can't say anything nice about whoever it is, then just don't say anything at all. Because 
there is already enough darkness. Just be the light. Jesus said that you are the light of the world. He said that you are the sons and the daughters of the Almighty One. And if you don't know it, you can't show it. But if you do know it, it's your obligation to show it. Do you know that if you're not love, if you don't know you are the living embodiment of love, you're going to try to find love outside of yourself. <coughs> you're going to search for it. You're going to bargain for it. You're going to plead for it. You're going to hold somebody else accountable for it. If you're not feeling enough love, it's not because you're of anything to do with you. It's because of your partner. It's because of somebody out there. So I've just been really, really awake. Really, really awake. And really, really overjoyed by the awesome experience of being on the planet. Do you know that I was not expected by anybody that knew me to live to be 21? I burnt my candles at both ends. I was a teenager during the hippie years. And I was a hippie and a gypsy. It was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. As many hours of those three things as I could squeeze in. And almost everybody said, Carlos is going to be dead before he's 21. But boy, he will have lived a life. He's one of those bright, bright lights that just burns for a while and then it goes out. And I was cool with that. But let me tell you, it's a surprise just to be standing here and going, Tuesday at 2.22 in the afternoon, I will have completed 67 circles of the earth around the sun. So every year is just a gift to me. And I want to make the gift that my life is a gift to the world. And I want to encourage each and every one of us to do that. Don't look for the light. Don't look for politicians to be the light of the world. They didn't sign up for that. No. <laughs> they did not sign up for it. And I, you know, I don't think any of them go to a unity church. <laughs> I don't think a single one of them has run across the Course in Miracles and has done the 365 workbook lessons. And so, I don't need to worry about what they're doing. But us, I need to think about what we're doing. We have access to these principles. What are we doing with them? Hopefully we're not just spewing them out of our mouths every Sunday when we gather in this place. Hopefully we're thinking about these principles all throughout the week and hopefully we are living by these principles. They are a key to happiness. If you truly believe that God is absolute good and that that good is everywhere present, that will take away some of the story of your pain. It will take away some of the story of your life's disappointments. You know, we all go through the fire, but that fire is here to purify us, not to kill us. I love the meditation that you did. You were never born, and you will never die. I said once at Unity of New York, I said, I know that Barry Manilow made famous this song, but the song is about me. I've been alive forever. I wrote the very first song. And that's true about you. You've been alive forever. You wrote the very first song. God spoke to one of God's children and said, where were you when I created the universe? And the sons and daughters of the Most High applauded. Well, the answer should have been, I was among the sons and daughters who applauded. You were never born. You will never die. Thank you so much for that reminder. We're going to deepen our five unity principles today. Do we have people who have only been willing to stand up and help us deepen a principle with rarity? <laughs> because we always have people who, who love to do it and whose hands go up right away. <laughs> But that makes me want even more some new voices, some new people participating. 
If you hardly ever do this, stand up right now and let this as a birthday gift to me. I'm going to stand up and give Reverend Carlos the presence of my ministry. I see two people standing. I see three. <laughs> they're in your. Uh, they're in your news. Come on. <laughs> and would you be the fifth? Thank you. <laughs> I like putting people to work when I first meet them. Just, okay. you're, not, you're not visiting today. You're actually a part of the ministry team. So in the order that you stood up, could you please uh, read your principle and let us deepen it with you. And tell us your name before you give us your principle. My name is Isaiah. God is absolute good everywhere present. Again, I say that. God is absolute good everywhere present. Together as a community. God is absolute good everywhere present. I believe. My name is Debbie. My essence, a spark of divinity, is of God, and therefore I am inherently good. And again, Debbie. My essence, a spark of divinity, is of God, and therefore I am inherently good. Together as a community, my, my essence, a spark of divinity, is of God, and therefore I am inherently good. How many of you remember that about yourselves, like uh, on the daily? This is a wonderful. Okay, principle number three. Great. Morning, Fred. I create my experiences by the activity of my thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning and fault. Again, my brother. I create my experiences by the activity of my thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning and fault. Together as a community. I, I create, create my experiences by the activity of my thinking. thinking. Everything in the manifest realm has its beginning in thought. This word thinking, I create my experiences by the activity of my thinking. When you read that word, I want you also to realize it's not just the thought process, it's your feelings. Mm -hmm. You create your experience by the activity of your feelings mm -hmm. and your thoughts and your words mm -hmm. and your intentions and by what you believe. If you believe the world is a scary place, mm. you're going to create a scary world. Mm. Not because the world is scary, but because you believe it is. Mm. Principle number four. four. Alex. Alex. Uh, prayer is uh, creative thinking that heightens the connection with God mind oh, yeah. and therefore brings forth wisdom, health, prosperity, and everything good. Again, Alex. Prayer is creative thinking that heightens the connection with God mind and therefore brings forth wisdom, health, prosperity, and everything good. Together as a community. Prayer, Prayer is creative thinking that heightens the connection with God mind and, and therefore brings forth wisdom, health, prosperity, and everything good. The operative word in this principle is creative. Prayer is creative thinking. The opposite of creative thinking is destructive thinking. Mm -hmm. When we are having destructive thoughts about ourselves, about anyone else, or about the world at large, we are not making God connection. We're making ego connection. Ego is the identity of one who believes themselves to be separate from God. So destructive thoughts are of the ego, but all creative thoughts connect you with the Almighty One who created us all. And our final principle, tell us your name. Bailey's. Bailey? Bailey's. Bailey? Bailey's. 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 Knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are just the beginning. I must also live the truth I know. And again, please, please. Knowing and understanding the laws of life, 
also called truth, are just the beginning. I must also live the truth I know. Together as a community. Knowing and understanding the laws of life, also called truth, are just, just the beginning. I must, I must also live the truth I know. And this is what I was urging us to do when I spoke a short while ago. I'm urging us to live the truth we know. My father used to say, there is nothing more beautiful than a Christ-like Christian. And there is nothing uglier than a Christian with no Christ-like spirit. Mm -hmm. So I'm grateful that we have an opportunity to gather and to deepen not only our understanding, but our willingness to embody and to practice and to extend the principles that we deepen. Do we have anybody who's here with us today for the first time? And if so, I'd like to...